Dark Monday, April 24 on 9. Hey, Mum. Oh. Good, you're at home then. Wait, is that you guys with our table? Steggles. We reckon there's nothing more important than time with family. That's why we're Steglers for quality time. No, no, they can't see us. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Hi, how are you going? Amy, um, what do you think Jackie really thinks about Kyle? Look, I've heard rumours that she doesn't like him, that she thinks he's a slob. <gasps> oh! Now, where would she have heard oh, that from? Not... Didn't you buy a Lamborghini he can't get into? That's completely wrong. It was the Ferrari I couldn't get into. I fit in the Lamborghini fine. What other jobs do you think Kyle would be good at? He could be a plus-size model. Ooh, burn. She's right, though. Don't just write milk on your shopping list. Write dairy farmers. Because you're not just buying milk, you're buying a better future for those that make it. So don't just buy milk. Buy milk that matters. For the ultimate seafood experience, you can't beat Sydney Fish Market. With specialist retailers, restaurants and cafes serving up a huge and delicious selection daily. Get hands-on with a cooking class at Sydney Seafood School. Or take a behind-the-scenes tour of one of the world's largest wholesale seafood auctions. Best of all, with a mix of retail stores on site, it's Australia's home of seafood. And a whole lot more. It's an exciting new world for your puppy. There's new things to touch and smell and even lick. But amongst all the fun things, there's also bacteria and viruses. Thankfully, he's protected by the colostrum found in his mother's milk, which helps him while his immune system is still developing. But when he leaves his mother and joins your new home, it's important that his natural defences remain supported. ProPlan Puppy with OptiStart does just this. It contains colostrum and compounds that are proven to support a strong immune system and help protect your puppy from common intestinal upsets. It helps support healthy joints for his active lifestyle, is formulated for daily dental care and keeps him ready to conquer daily challenges. Like learning, exploring and doing things only puppies can do. Give your puppy Pro Plan Puppy with OptiStart. It'll be the best possible start for his amazing life. There has never been a better time to be involved in primary industries. The world's population continues to grow at a rapid rate, creating greater demand for natural resources and the raw materials and products that we manage and produce. Did you know that one-fifth of all Australian agricultural exports come from our state? From rural and regional areas to coastal and metropolitan. We are building a strong and diverse New South Wales economy for the future. Don't just write milk on your shopping list. Write dairy farmers. Because you're not just buying milk, you're buying a better future for those that make it. So don't just buy milk. Buy milk that matters.
Well, are we happy? I'm pretty happy. It's a Beautiful day here in Sydney for Good Friday. Welcome back to the Spotless Stadium. It's lovely to have your company. So many happy faces around the show. I went for a quick walk there and you know when you have to dodge people and jump sideways that it is a good day at the show. So we're heading into a wonderful uh, Easter weekend and lovely to see so many people here and uh, so many beautiful horses now making their way into the arena for the afternoon's ring classes. And we have some wonderful classes to bring you and none more so than the FL Crane best mare or filly hack over 15 hands and not exceeding 16 hands. This is a very prestigious class. It has the FL Crane perpetual trophy attached to it and we're looking for the type of mare showing thoroughbred qualities that would be suitable for the breeding of hacks. So our, um, our winner in this will be an absolute stunner and I'm sure you'll all agree. Now we've got some ponies joining us as well and uh, it's our class 605, the child's pony over 12.2 hands, not exceeding 14 hands and ridden by a child under 17 years of age. That's the class that will be judged underneath the uh, billboard. And we have our novice show hunter ponies over 13 two hands, not exceeding 14 hands. And uh, that is with our judge, Ms. Brooke Stevenson. And it's for all ponies that haven't won at a Royal Show level here before. And then in front of the Sinclair stand, we move on to class uh, 614, which is, that is our novice show hunter pony, I beg your pardon. That is the class in front of the, um, the Sinclair stand. And in uh, 639, in front of the Cumberland stand, is our best novice show hunter hack. So we've had some fabulous show hunters out there. And uh, now these are the winners of this morning's classes. And uh, they are about to go out and um, be judged for best novice show hunter hack with Ms. Nicola Yates. And we welcome anyone viewing on live stream. You will be seeing exactly what we're seeing here in the Spotless Stadium on the big screen. But of course, we do have other classes running. And I know you'll all be wanting to keep a close eye on the FL Crane for our best mare or filly hack over 15 hands and not exceeding 16 hands, which in the opinion opinion of the judge shows thoroughbred qualities and would be suitable for the breeding of hacks. Of course, the thoroughbred... Very famous, well-known breed. I'm sure it needs no introduction. It is, of course, the fastest horse in uh, the world. We don't necessarily want them putting on that much speed here in the show ring. And uh, we do actually see some, some wonderful thoroughbreds that uh, have had life on the track that find their way to the show ring for a, a second chance. And... Uh, the uh, attributes that we are looking for in a beautiful hack today, we will see something with a real presence, a real sort of look at me, a poise and a grace. The way they're put together, the confirmation, their beauty, their movement, all will be taken into consideration. And there is the wonderful FL Crane Perpetual Trophy. And this was donated by the late Mr. F.L. Crane and first presented in 1952. There are some fabulous horses and uh, rider combinations here that have gone on and uh, done some wonderful things here. So last year's winner was Mrs. Angela Javier with La Catwalk. And in 2015, it was Mrs. Belinda Dicker with Tavita. Ms. Belinda Scanlon has her name here in the history books as well and uh, Shelley Penny. And we go right back to 1952 when J.C. Smith won it on medley. And our judge for this class, 
Class 578, the FL Crane best mare or filly hack over 15 hands and not exceeding 16 hands is Mr. Clary Connors, well-known racing trainer. He's been about um, thoroughbreds all of his life and uh, he's had great taste of Group 1 success. He won uh, his first in 1984 with the AJC Sires Produce Stakes and uh, has won many other great races and uh, certainly knows his way around a thoroughbred. His judging style today has been very measured and very careful and uh, all towards getting the best result here. So exciting times as we sit and wait for uh, our horses to come out uh, for Mr. Clary Connors. And just mentioning in our other rings in our class 614 for the novice show Hunter Pony, we welcome back Ms. Brooke Stevenson to judge today in class 639 for the best novice show hunter hack. It's Ms. Nicola Yates. And Ms. Kate Dolan is judging our child's pony over 12.2 hands and not exceeding 14 hands. And the entries in our best novice show hunter hack, the winner of class 636, the novice show hunter hack over 15 two hands not exceeding 16 hands, which was Green Oaks Munich with Phoebe Wilkinson. The winner of class 637, the novice show hunter hack, 16 hands and not exceeding 16.2 hands, and that was Sarah Lamb with Master Tonto. And the winner of our class 638, the novice show hunter hack over 16 two hands, which was won by Georgie Kellogg from Hawthorne East with Bell Cam Coraline. So uh, they are our entries there in our best novice show hunter hack. So now we have movement at the station in the FL Crane. We're looking for our best mare or filly hack over 15 hands, not exceeding 16 hands, which in the opinion of our judge shows thoroughbred qualities and would be suitable for the breeding of hacks.
Well, our 14 competitors in Class 5, 7, 8, the FL Crane, best mare or filly hack over 15 hands and not exceeding 16 hands, which in the opinion of the judge shows thoroughbred qualities and is suitable for breeding of hacks. They're all out there. We initially had 21 nominations for this class, but uh, 14 are now present in front of our uh, judge, Mr. Clary Connors and uh, Christy Oatley, Olympian, and... Uh, Wonderful dressage rider joining Mr. Uh, Connors there to judge this class. Some stunning mares and fillies out there and some very experienced riders who will know how to present them at their best. As we mentioned, a lot of history and prestige associated with this particular class. And for those people less familiar with uh, the show ring that mightn't have seen a class like this before, the sorts of things in a beautiful hack that uh, the judge will be looking for will be perfect confirmation, which is how the horse is put together, and a lovely graceful movement, an obedient horse that uh, will calmly go about its business and do what is asked of it by its rider. It needs to be well conditioned and neatly presented and uh, in beautiful shiny good health as we see there. And really good horses have a presence, that certain something that makes you pick them out from everyone else. And if you watch these 14 horses, you may find that there's one or two that catches your eye even more than the others. And it's that certain, what's it called, that it factor, that look at me, that commands attention. And it is, in many respects, a beauty contest. We're looking for a quality animal and uh, beautifully presented here. Ridden in uh, double bridles here. As they move into the canter. And a great hack has fabulous movement. So it's balance, elegance, lightness, correctness, rhythm, all these things contributing to the overall picture, which should be pleasing to the eye. Smooth transitions downwards now and... Uh, Soon we'll see which of our 14 will be asked to work out. Ah, no, they're all being asked to turn around and we'll head off in the other direction. We're up to the workout stage of our novice show hunter pony, over 13 two hands and not exceeding 14 hands. and also at our best novice show hunter hat class.
Well, it's with great pleasure that we are able to announce the winner of our special class 639, the Best Novice Show Hunter Hack. And congratulations to catalogue number 2446, Phoebe Wilkinson from Terry Hills with Green Oaks Munich, winner of the 2017 Sydney Royal Horse Show Best Novice Show Hunter Hack. Some very stiff competition there in uh, that particular class. All the first prize winners in classes 635 through to 638 are competing and contesting that class. And uh, congratulations there to Phoebe Wilkinson. And there was a prize for the best novice show hunter hack supported by the New South Wales Show Hunter Cheer Squad. And uh, we thank them for that. And uh, Kate, the first of our competitors working out here in front of our judge for the FL Crane, best mare or filly, hack over 15 hands, not exceeding 16 hands. We welcome to centre stage exhibit number 1515, Mrs Debbie Garland with CP Glamour. Well, the next of our competitors walking out here in front of our judge in the FL Crane Trophy. We welcome out competitor number 2245, Mrs Karen Shaw. We're exhibiting uh, Regina George. And we are honoured, Tim, and uh, privileged to join to our very humble broadcast box the Chair of the Royal Agricultural Societies of the Commonwealth, Lord Vesti. How do you do? And good well, thank welcome. You, welcome thank aboard. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. A lovely day. Uh, we're seeing a very special class here. Yeah, indeed. And um, such a wonderful class of um, quality thoroughbred mares yes. and uh, trying to work out who would be most suitable as a, a mare for hacks. Now, I know you have had uh, in your career as a master of the horses for Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth, wonderful experience with horses and a great wealth of knowledge. What do you think we should be looking for today? Well, they, they, they all look very classy. I mean, we're, we're standing at the back, so we can't see their heads. They're only looking at their behinds. But they look very nice, and seeing them going round, they're, they're very good. And obviously, the people have taken an enormous amount of trouble with them. They look very smart, don't they? They do indeed. But my mother used to show hacks. My, my mother was Australian. And when she came over to England, she used to show hacks. I know a little bit about hacks, but not very much. 
Were you ever lured into a gentleman or a boy rider class in that case? No, but I used to ride my mother's horse when it used to get a bit stroppy when I was I was about 15, a bit bigger. And I used to ride it side saddle. It got stroppy. And then so I learned to ride side saddle, which was quite interesting. Well, that is an extraordinary talent. <laughs> I don't have to do that now, I must say. And you are uh, still involved in the thoroughbred industry. I gather you have a small thoroughbred stud at home in Gloucestershire as We've well. We've got three mares. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we're now, well, sorry, there's one more coming in, but there's one going to retire. So there's one having a mare about now, and she'll retire. She's 18. Mm-hmm. And there's a four-year-old that we bred that won a listed race, she's coming back, and she's gone to a sire called Australia, owned by Coolmore. I said to someone, they said, what have you done with that nice filly you had? I said, she's gone to Australia. Good God, he said, why is that? And I said, no, the stallion, not the country. <laughs> <laughs> so the qualities you would look for in your thoroughbreds, can you well, shed the, some information? Well, for, for the... For the Queen, obviously, we look for carriage horses, and we have the Windsor Greys, and we have the um, uh, the, the, the Browns as well. But we, the Queen breeds them at, at um, Hampton Court Stud, which is the oldest stud in the world. And it was started in 1528 by Henry VIII. And when Cromwell came along, he smashed up the carriages and the, all the crowds, but he needed the horses. Mm-hmm. So he kept the horses and the master of the horse. And when Charles II came back in 1660, the first thing he did was execute the master of the horse. Five of my predecessors so far have been executed. Oh dear. But that threat seems to have gone away now, so I've been there 18 years. It hasn't happened to me yet. One hopes. <laughs> no, but with the carriage horses, we're obviously, especially with the Cleveland Bays, we're looking for big, strong horses. Mm-hmm. Um, but for ordinary riding horses, yes. I mean, I love these hacks. They're lovely. We have, I mean, do you have hunters here as well, hunter classes? Indeed. In fact, we have a, a novice uh, show hunter class was just as decided then and we determined the best uh, for this 2017 Sydney Royal Easter show. So, yes, indeed. And, uh, in fact, the hunter classes have been uh, growing in popularity very rapidly over the last, uh, say, five to ten years particularly. Mm. Yeah, one of the problems, I think, about show horses is that they get them too fat because mm. they, them, they want them to look like. But if you had one at home, I think it would expire if you took it out for two long and so I mean I really do think looking at the shows at home that our hunters are too fat the hacks aren't too bad but the hunters get I'm afraid in my opinion get too too fat Lord Vesti you are in Australia at the moment you've just been in uh, in New Zealand as your role as the chair of the Royal Agricultural Societies of the Commonwealth, what does what does that role entail, and what does that uh, organisation uh, look after? Well, it's, it was started by the Duke of Edinburgh in 1956, because in 1954 the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh went round uh, the Commonwealth on a tour for nine months uh, in Britannia in the Royal Yacht, and they were taken to every royal show there was. You know, they take the Queen to the show; she likes horses. And, and Prince Philip would say, "Well, do you know the people in Sydney?" Do you? No. Why don't you people know each other? So he started in 1956. He started this thing. We now have um, 37 different um, societies, uh, main royal societies, and other people as well, um, from, I think it's 17 different countries. And we have a a conference every two years. Uh, We have a... Two of the major things, we have the chief executives have a day, so the chief executive of the show can come along and talk to other people about the problems they have at their shows. And then we have a thing called the Next Generation, which is under 35s, and they are sponsored by a show society. So a show society in England will sponsor someone to go to our conference in, well, next year it's going to be in Canada, last year it was in Singapore, before that we are in Zambia. We go to Commonwealth countries every two years. And the next generation is very interesting. They, on their own initiative, they raise money. They go to somewhere in the year we don't have a conference. And they've been to Africa. They've been to um, Papua New Guinea. They've been, and they try to go to small, poorer countries and try and help them with their farming. And they learn a bit, and they're able to help. And they come back and tell me how to milk goats. And they tell, tell people how to put up how to put up fences and how to get water and that sort of thing. So it's, and we have 300-odd people at our conferences. 
which is very good. I've just been in New Zealand. They very kindly asked me to open the Royal Easter show, which I did under very wet conditions. Um, but I'm trying to drum up more support from New Zealand because we've only got three societies there who are members. Whereas here in, in Australia, we've got 14. So, you know, we need more New Zealanders. And so that's what I was there to say, to try and get them As long as they can't play sport. <laughs> Well, the good thing about rugby is that we, as England, are getting quite good. We got beaten by Ireland, but we're almost up to Australia's standard now. We're coming good. Can I give you a suggestion to get more New Zealanders? Because they yes. love beating Australia. So just tell them there's 14 <laughs> chase societies here in Australia, and yeah. surely that will uh, yeah, entice they, them they, to want to join. They are quite, yes, you're quite right. They're, um, they're quite tricky about that, aren't they? Well, there, there, is a, there is a rivalry here in the Southern Hemisphere, Lord Vesti, that let me tell you, if uh, Australia was taking on New Zealand in cockroach racing, in anything at all, we would certainly be very competitive and very vocal. Absolutely. No, it, it certainly is. But I have to keep quite quiet that I'm half Australian when I'm there, so I just say, they say, me from, from England. Oh, yes, yes, England. I don't say I'm half Australian. That's, uh, you're, you actually have uh, some involvement here in Australia and down in Victoria. You have some Well, property. my mother, who died a few years ago, we, we turned, turned the garage. We, we got a vineyard. We planted a vineyard for her. So we turned her garage into a restaurant. We turned the men's quarters into a cellar door. We turned the stables into a, 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 a museum for my great-grandmother, Melba, and also for a shop. Um, and we only produce wine. We, we sell half the grapes we produce, and the rest of it we sell in the restaurant. And it's working very well. We, and it seems to be very popular. And then we've also got another, we've got another one, in, another vineyard in northern Victoria. We've got one in Adelaide Hills as well. So having been a butcher, I'm now a wine merchant. So, um, so I've come the full... But, like everyone, they say that meat's bad for you. So you know, that's right. Now they say wine's bad for you. We, in, in Brazil, we grow sugar cane. They now say sugar's bad for you. So I, I can't get it right. <laughs> well, Lord Vesti, we've got a result coming to hand. We'll take a short break. And the results of our Class 614, the novice show Hunter Pony over 13 two hands and not exceeding 14 hands. And congratulations to... Catalogue number 2316, Kirsten Strath from McGrath's Hill with Monteith Bronton. In second place, it's catalogue number 1085, BR, S and M's, the Ms. Passeri Twins and Ms. Peyton Daniel from Bensville with Hanley Park Thumper. In third place, catalogue number 1640, Brent Hull and Mrs. Jean Hull and Miss Kelly Hull from Bingy, New South Wales with Dridgery Park Regal Affair. And in fourth place, catalogue number 2472, Sarah Young from Moree with Camilla Roy Enchantment. In fifth place, catalogue 1317, Trina Crawford and Miss Trinette Crawford from McDougall's Hill with Brayburn Oscar de la Renta, New Zealand. And in sixth place, catalogue number 1412, Abby Douch from Berrydale with Bamber Domino. Quite a mouthful there, but congratulations to Kristen Strath from McGrath's Hill with Monteith Brunton. And that was class 614, the novice show Hunter Pony over 13 two hands and not exceeding 14 hands. Lord Vesti, we are going to invite you, I think, down into the arena to have a, a look up close and personal um, with this class, the uh, the Crane uh, Trophy that we are currently judging at the moment, the FL Crane for right. the best mayor or filly. Just before you go, racing here in Australia, the racing industry is very, very strong. Yes. We've just seen uh, some record-breaking sales at the, the company. I actually worked for over at Inglis the other day. Yeah. They had $156 million passed through their sale ring in two weeks. Of course, here in Australia, we then have a really strong movement now for life after racing. Yeah. And do you, do you see a lot of that in, in Re England? Retrained racehorses, very, very big. Well, because people are looking and they're saying, you know, what happens to these, what happens to poor horses? And so retrained horses is, is a big thing. And I'm, I'm going two weeks time again to the Royal Windsor Horse Show. And we have an enormous class of retrained racehorses. Which is very good. It's, well, it's, it's the power behind most of our show horses here yeah. in Australia. It's interesting to, to hope and see that there are so many good breeding lines uh, coming through and that we get to take the ones that maybe aren't superstars and the ones that are superstars well, I mean, and mix you know, them all what, together. What do you do with a gelding? You can, you know, you've got a mare that you can do something with, but you've got a gelding getting older and they're very useful hacks and, and people enjoy them. But I see that English is moving. It's, so, it's doing so well. It's moving to a new... 
we've Please. outgrown the location where they currently are. They're about 11 acres in Randwick, and they're now moving out to Warwick Farm. And what actually, about the big tree? Are you going to take the tree with you? Well, the fig tree stays, and the original barn stays. That's actually oh, both right. been heritage listed, as is the original homestead. So, right. Uh, it will be interesting to see the move, but a new state-of-the-art complex is being built. As well, I didn't speak. buy I didn't buy anything this year. I wasn't there, but I've had the, some fun over the years and bought quite a few. Well, maybe you'll have to come next year to the to the new sale grounds. It will be yeah, amazing. The, but the problem is that I mean, it, when I first came twenty years ago, started buying, they were relatively cheap. Now you're up in world prices. And, you know, it's just, you might as well buy in England as buy in Australia now. <laughs> but then you and our, get pound, our pound is very weak. Your Aussie dollar is strong. So we're in, you know, b trouble both ways. <laughs> well, Lord Bethy, thank you so much for dropping into our, our broadcast box. It's been an honour and a privilege to uh, have you here as our guest. And enjoy your time at well, the Sydney Royal Easter Show. And, of course, the, the chair of the Royal Agricultural Societies of the Commonwealth, Mr. Lord Vesti, thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed. Well, it's 52 years since I first came well, to the Royal Show. We, but it, it was in the old one. I've missed a few years, but I haven't missed many, John, have I? Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it was a real pleasure to have uh, Lord Vesti here, as we said, the chair of the Royal Agricultural Societies of the Commonwealth. And Lord Vesti is the master of the horses for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. And... Uh, Kate Day, we get to meet all sorts of wonderful people here and see all sorts of amazing things and we hope everyone here in the ground is enjoying their day in the Spotless Stadium. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have results now from class number 587. The FL Crane, best mare or filly, hack over 15 hands and not exceeding 16 hands, which in the opinion of the judge shows thoroughbred qualities and suitable for breeding of hacks. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for catalogue number 1515. Debbie Garland from Serpentine in Western Australia with CP Glamour. Oh, she shakes her ha head in disbelief. What a privilege. Isn't that wonderful? Lovely to see that emotion. It most certainly is, and congratulations. <laughs> CP Glamour, sired by Pure Win, out of Stella Cara. Still Cara. So Debbie Garland from Serpentine in Western Australia, that must have been well worth the trip. She'll now be presented with the beautiful Garland for the FL Crane Best Mare or Philly Hack over 15 and not exceeding 16 hands, showing thoroughbred qualities and it's supported by David Astor Floral Designs. And there is also a medallion, the actual FL Crane Perpetual Trophy. 
which is a silver-plated wine cooler donated by the late Mr F.L. Crane and first presented in 1952. And Mr Crane was a well-known polo player and breeder of thoroughbreds from Jerry's Plains in the Hunter Valley and his aim in presenting the trophy was to encourage the breeding of a better saddle horse and to give a prize to the best mare on the showground. It was originally presented to the best mare or filly hack over 14 hands and not exceeding 15 two hands but uh, that has now uh, changed, that height restriction, and it's awarded for the best mare or filly hack over 15 hands and not exceeding 16 hands, showing a percentage of thoroughbred qualities and, in the opinion of the judge, being suitable for the breeding of hacks. And now we have Miss Kim Durant making uh, the garland. And, of course, Kim, no stranger to the show world, well, great to welcome her back here today. And uh, she has been a very successful competitor here at the Sydney Royal Easter Show for many, many years based on the Gold Coast. In Queensland, we welcome Mrs Kim Durant making the Connections at Garland presentation for the FL Crane Best Mare or Filly. And now we see the beautiful red ribbon being presented to Mr Craig Porter from Queensland with LP Classy Lady. That's... 2096 in your catalogue. So our main hack awards here for our mares at the Sydney Royal Easter Show have been taken out by a West Australian and a Queenslander. What a stunning mare. So we'll have some nice ride-off music for the And the participation ribbons are now being uh, awarded to our other wonderful exhibits. What a strong field. Everybody looks stunning. And uh, they've done a terrific job to narrow it down to our two Last year, this was won by Mrs. Angela Haviev with uh, La Catwalk. In 2015, it was Mrs. Belinda Dicker with Tavita. In 2014, Ms. Belinda Scanlon with Alkyra Elegance. And in 2013, Mrs. A. Doyle and Daisy Patch Stud with DP Ophelia. So Debbie Garland from Serpentine in Western Australia now joining the honours list with the beautiful mare, C.P. Glamour. <laughs> she takes a big breath. Well done. It's one of life's moments that you just won't forget, isn't it, Tim? Well done. It most certainly is. Well, as they come around, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. A magnificent win. It is great to see one of our travellers all the way from Western Australia, some three and a half thousand kilometres from here in Sydney, to come all the way from just south of Perth, from Serpentine, Western Australia. Well done to Debbie Garland, CP Glamour. Our runner-up, well done to Craig Porter from the Sunshine Coast hinterland of Mullaney with LP Classy Lady.